Hi and welcome to a new video regarding WebXR and this time we're going to have a look into Babylon JS. So this will be a short tutorial on how to get quickly started with Vit and Babylon JS for creating a simple 3D application for your browser and even with WebXR. So let's get started. First of all, I open Visual Studio and maybe you will wonder, but I'm using Bun here. So Bun is a package manager, a very fast JavaScript package manager, way faster than Node.js. And basically all packages that are working with Node.js are working with Bun too. So I was trying to give it a shot some while ago and it worked quite well. So we're going to work with Bun today too, but the whole tutorial can also be done with npm and when you're using bun make sure to have the newest version i have 1.1.20 here because older versions are likely to not work with https and speaking of vit we're also going to use vit here with the bun installing you probably know vit when you've been watching the other tutorials and it's a very good tool for fast testing and instant server starts and in general good for publishing and everything that's regarded to web development. So let's start with um, create read at latest. So we're going to name a project test Babylon GS. We're going to use vanilla and we're going to use JavaScript. You can also use TypeScript here because Babylon JS has a very, very good TypeScript support, but it's a little bit easier for me to go with JavaScript here. And now we're going to get inside a folder that's now created. Test Babylon JS. And let's go bun and install. And for our first test, let's do bun run dev. And we see that our localhost web server is already running. Let's open it the browser. Here we go. Here's the template from Vit, and our web server is already running. Control Z to stop the web server. Let's have a look at files. So it's basically just the usual uh, web development stuff, the counter.js, the main.js, and our index.html. And we're going to delete the counter.js. We're going to empty basically everything except the few inputs for the logos. And in the index.html, we're going to remove the div id for app and insert a canvas and this canvas canvas id render canvas will be the canvas we're going to use for our babylon js and in the css let's move everything and go with the very simple stuff here for babylon js so that the whole the 3D experience is all over the screen. That's basically everything. So we're now ready to start with Babylon JS opening the terminal. And before starting, let's have a short look what Babylon JS is. And Babylon JS, currently in version 7.0, is similar to 3GS, a web 3D web XR framework, which lets you easily create web experiences with AD. Due to its due to it not being as popular as VGS, Babylon just has lots of individual features and is quite stable and has a lot of good support, especially for the WebXR stuff. So it's always a good alternative to use. And when you think of VGS, there are quite some differences when it comes to coding. But 
I think it's personal preference. Here there's no notable difference for, let's say, everyday web or 3D developers to choose the one or the other. I personally like Babylon just a little bit more than 3GS, especially in terms of stability, as some updates from 3GS make breaking changes, and Babylon just is quite stable here. Although, on the other hand, 3GS supports way more stuff. And is, I think the community is pretty big with 3GS compared to Babylon JS, but that doesn't matter here. Um, enough of the talk, let's get started. So, first of all, we have to import our packages here. And for starters, we're going right here and fun install at Babylon JS slash core and dash dash zip. It's the first package, and we're probably going to create WebXR stuff, so we will have a few more things to import. There is the GUI package. The inspector, Babylon JS comes with a very good inspector, similar to A-frame inspector. And we will need two more for the WebXR stuff later on, on one time the loaders, which can be used, for instance, for UTF and the materials. And that's it. And maybe you know it from the wheat JS tutorials with 3JS, every time we want to run something on WebXR, we need HTTPS, HTTPS. And in Vite, it's pretty easy to install. We just go bun install at vite.js slash plugin minus basic minus SSL dash dash dev. Save it as dev dependency because we don't want to publish it later on. Plugin basic SSL. Okay, typo. Here we go. And we're nearly ready to start. We need a new file, which is called the root.config.js. And we're just copying the default configuration stuff in there. And just in case you're wondering where this script comes from, it is the GitHub page of the Vit SSL plugin. And when you scroll down a little bit, there is the config.js file and everything that's here. I just copied into our local config file. And now we're ready to go. If you're now going bun run dev, you see that the server is already started on HTTPS. And if we now go Run run dev dash dash host. We'll see that our website is also reachable. Advanced, except the risk can continue, and you see that there is nothing yet. But everything is more or less up and running. And now it's time to switch to the main JS part now and start with the coding. So, first of all, we need the imports for Babylon Core and the GUI. We won't be using the GUI in this specific tutorial, but maybe in a later tutorial. And we're going to import the loaders and the materials just beforehand to have everything here together. Loaders, materials, with a little explanation why and why, why we're importing these. And let's get started by getting our canvas here, document.get element by ID, render canvas, creating a new Babylon engine here with the canvas. And as the next step, we're going to create a new 
see function like this. Let's leave it empty for now. And when the create scene function is called, we're going to render it. So after this was called, render it, create scene, then the scene that's created here or returned from this function will be run in the render loop. And for resizing, we're just adding the window resize. So that the Babylon engine will also resize. That's actually pretty good for now. So we can now start like in 3JS and any other JavaScript framework to create a new scene. And this new scene will have a camera. We're going to choose the arc rotate camera. So this camera will basically rotate around the point. In this case, it's the center point. When you look at the description from the rotate camera, you see that there is everything explained pretty good. And we're going to attach the camera to our canvas, creating a light. Let's do just some hemispheric light. Reduce the light intensity a little bit. And create a sphere with the Mesh Builder class in Babylon JS. Change the sphere position a little bit upward so we can see it better. And after everything is set up, we return the scene so that the scene that's returned here is the scene to render and this will render. Wait for the reload and then check if it's working and we see here that the sphere is rendered. I can with mouse drag on the left button and with the pushed mouse wheel zoom in, zoom out and and zoom around the sphere, which is for well, this little bit of code pretty awesome. Everything is working in the console as well. And that's our first scene with Babylon Chess. So adding the XR stuff is actually pretty easy because there is a very convenient method for getting all the XR stuff into the scene. And this is a method from the scene object itself. So for starters, we're just creating a new ground object, which is just a, uh, a flat cube. And we will use that ground to create our XR application. XR awaits scene.creatable XR experience async, where the floor meshes are the ground and the optional features like hand tracking are true. And if we now save and switch back to the browser. We see that down here is already an extremity symbol, which will allow us to switch into immersive VR mode. Let's start the WebXR simulator, switch to an extremity mode, and you see that here are the controllers. I can already move my headset and test it in WebXR. But that's not everything. We'll just go back to the console here. If we're going to test it with the XR glasses like the Quest, just put on the Quest. And as you can see here, I'm already in XR, going to Advanced because the certificate isn't trusted. Go in here. When the site is loaded, I can just handle it like every other browser site. And if I switch to mixed reality mode, then you see that I'm already in XR. The hand tracking is already working. My pointer is working. I can select. You see that the pointer is going blue. And if I aim at the ground and pinch, you can see that there is already some kind of transportation. And just tapping doesn't let me transport. So don't be afraid. That's normal because the time for transport is five seconds. So I have to hold the pinch for five seconds. 
and then I'm already teleported here. I can tell that this already feels pretty good and this is really fast for creating a WebXR experience with Babylon.js. So we created a WebXR experience with already working hand tracking interactions and teleport with less, with about 20 lines of code in a very short amount of time. And I can't thank my YouTube supporters enough. You see them here on the list for supporting the channel as a channel member. Please consider becoming a member too, or at least subscribe, like, and comment this video. If you want to see more than this, more of this, feel free to like, feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe, feel free to become a channel member, especially when you're interested in the Unity Web RTC stuff that's only available for channel members. So thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.